fantasy and romance never get old, even in 2024. So here are the top 10 fantasy romance anime series you must watch. Number 10, the magic girl and the evil lieutenant used to be arch enemies. Stern Off is a series that is literally like Devil is a Part-Timer. Bayakuya is the alter ego of the magical girl Glass Happiness, while Mira is a villainous lieutenant to the evil king and wants to eliminate Bayakuya. Unexpectedly, Mira falls in love at first sight. Instead of plotting against Bayakuya, she finds excuses to see her. Surprisingly, she doesn't seem to mind. Only nine episodes have aired so far while I'm writing this review, but I want to do justice to this overlooked hidden gem. Of course, it's sweet and perfect for anyone who enjoys romance. It will leave you blushing and kick in the air at the end of each episode. Or why is the art and color palettes are so pleasing to the eyes? You just gotta love the enemies to lovers trope. Unfortunately for you though, you and your crush only stay as enemies. Number nine, I'll become a villainess who goes down in history. <laughs> And we're back with some villainous stories because huh, why the hell not? Alicia is the eldest daughter of the Williams family and she excels in dark magic. She has a sharp tongue and a malevolent nature, making her a villainess in an Otame game. A young woman who admires Alicia wishes to be her and is reincarnated as seven-year-old Alicia. Confident in her knowledge of the game, she aims to be the greatest villainess. <laughs> The villainess actually does the work and makes herself look like a villain. Unlike the majority of these types of stories where the MC seeks to discard the original role, she intends to keep it. Each episode's packed with entertaining events, and artistically, this anime shines. Not to mention, the animation's really good, and the characters that appear actually feel like they're supposed to be there, and not just annoy you. Number 8, Nina the Starry Bride. If you thought you were unlucky, then you never met this girl before. Five years ago, a plague killed many in Fortna, including Nina's parents. To survive, Nina and two orphans steal from the wealthy. She is later abducted by Azura Seth Fortna, the second prince, who wants her to pose as his late sister to prevent war. Nina reluctantly agrees, and with Azura's help, she prepares to take on this role. You will definitely enjoy the development of the story and the unique approach it takes. In terms of the art, it is a perfect fit for the vibe and atmosphere of the story. It's quite lovely and significantly enhances the anime's charm. Plot-wise, it is a great story that manages to keep you on your toes. I bet it's gonna make some grown men cry. Number seven, is it wrong to try to pick up girls in a dungeon? <laughs> You know an anime is either trash or godly when the title asks you a question. Bell Cranel has leveled up but cannot rest yet. The heist of Familia still struggles to match the power of the other Familias in Oririo when a brutal murderer shocks the adventuring community. One of Bell's allies is accused of the crime. Now Bell and his friends must clear their ally's name and uncover a dark plot lurking within the dungeon. If you made it this far, you are for sure somewhat intrigued by the world building plot, or the characters of this anime. After the success of the last season, it's clear that this season will be action packed, with great development in the physical abilities of the characters. Also, it has five seasons. <laughs> That's rare for anime in this genre, and people say it'll just keep getting better. Number six, the do over damsel conquers the dragon emperor. Oh, 
Before we had the magical girl and evil lieutenant, and now we have the do over damsel and the dragon emperor. Who's coming up with these titles? <laughs> Anyways, Jill Seville, known as the lady goddess of war, is betrayed by her fiance and framed as a traitor. She awakens six years in the past and resolves to avoid her engagement to the prince. Jill professes love to the dragon emperor Hades, who surprisingly accepts. This Hades is kind, and Jill wonders if she can change his fate. You should have for anyone who likes their fantasy to be just a little absurd, this series has plenty of laughs, whilst also managing to tug on the old heartstrings, while the idea of the time-traveling girl escaping the prince only to end up marrying a foolish demon prince might seem unusual, their interactions are often genuinely cute and hilarious. That doesn't make you want to watch the series, I don't know what will. Number 5, Our Last Crusade or The Rise of a New World Season 2. I never had this anime in my list of shows that'll get a season 2, but that just goes to show how good it is. Astral power is wielded by mages and feared by the Empire, leading to persecution. The mages, founded by nebulous sovereignty to escape, resulting in a long-standing war. Knight Iska is imprisoned for feeling a witch, but is later released to hunt the Ice Calamity Witch. <laughs> Similar to Romeo and Juliet, of course, but it has magic. A total ripoff? Eh, debatable. Boring? <laughs> Absolutely not. The action scenes weren't something to be scoffed at either, and the animation is pretty fluid. If I'm allowed to be more selfish, I would want more of the series' magical display. Art-wise, it is absolutely top-notch. Everything from the backgrounds and character designs to the magic battles is just plain eye candy. Number 4, Spirit Chronicles Season 2. Truck Coon must be getting paid a lot because he's just everywhere. Haruto Amakawa dies in a traffic accident and wakes up in another world as a boy named Ryo. Discovering he has magical powers, Ryo is still driven by the desire to avenge his mother's murder. Along the way, he saves the kidnapped princess of the Bertram Kingdom, earning a place at the Bertram Royal Academy. Spirit Chronicles is a story that starts out generic but becomes interesting as it progresses. The completely overpowered MC, with virtually no flaws, goes on an adventure, faces hardships that he immediately overcomes, and is pretty much a boss. The character designs overall are pretty good, and the variety is where it especially excels. One thing this anime does really well is how it ends each episode, making everything feel badass. Number three, no longer allowed in another world. <laughs> <laughs> this anime has the most relatable MC ever because he just wants to die. Just as our Osamu Dazai was about to commit suicide with his lover Sachan, he is hit by a truck and transported to another world. The local priestess and Ned deems him an adventurer and tasks him with slaying the Demon King. But Sensei refuses and instead searches for Sachan, hoping she is in the new world. <laughs> a breath of fresh air to the Isekai series is how I would sum up this series. It's very well done. Starting with the characters, the season delivers a lot in terms of their stories and gives quite a bit of character development. Many side characters are interesting as well and often relate directly to the overarching episodic plot. And I think the twists here are going to be insane. Number two, Dahlia in Bloom crafting a fresh start with magical tools. Imagine dying from overworking. <laughs> it's gotta be one of the worst ways to go. Dying in an explosion is so much better. A young Japanese woman dies from overwork and is reborn as Daya Rossetti, born of a baron. Inspired by her father Carlo, a magic artificer, she creates practical inventions. As an adult, Daya becomes well known and gets engaged to her father's apprentice. Uh, uh, hi. 
Dal Yen Bloom is not a regular isekai story, as it's far from realistic. The characteristics of the characters do not cross the line of romance, nor become overemphasized in cliché, which contributes to the uniqueness of the anime. Not to mention, the show is not very fast-paced, and it does not set in immediately, but builds up steam with time, making it perfect for binge-watching. With its slice-of-life components and well-maintained mood, this anime is a real gem for relaxation. Number 1, ReZero Starting Life in Another World, Season 3. And of course, what fantasy romance anime can beat this one because not only did it start the waifu wars, but everyone thinks it's peak. The plot is of course gonna follow where season 2 left off, and I don't want to spoil what happened there because I'm just that good of a person. You just have to know what Subaru always time travels when he dies, and he tries his best to save everyone, including his love, Amelia. <laughs> Compared to most isekai series, ReZero subverts the common trope to achieve a unique message and formulate the setting to an authentic extent. Not to mention, the pacing and cinematography are done so well. When it comes to the visuals, character designs are vibrant and unique. Because of that and more, it's number one in our list, the top 10 new fantasy romance anime series you must watch.